So now that we have the compose file, we can go ahead and test it out so that we can see if we can create the MySQL uh, database. So I'm gonna write everything and then quit. And then here, what I want to do is to check to see if this file is correct. So I can do uh, docker-compose and then I can do config. So if you do that, then Docker config is gonna look in the current directory and it's gonna check for the Docker compose file. And if this file is correct, we'll know. So if I press enter here, you can see that we didn't get any error and you can see that it gives you more detail as to what it's gonna be doing as far as the values that it's gonna be using. So you can see that there is some extra information here, but you can see that everything looks fine. We didn't get any error. If there was a problem in the file, then we would have gotten some kind of error. We, you know, we would say, hey, this is wrong or something like that. So when we don't have any errors and it shows you the file like this with the extra information that it's actually gonna be using, then you know that your file is good. So I'm gonna clear the screen and then I'm gonna see if I can run the MySQL container. So let me check to see if I have anything running. So I'm going to do that correct PS uh, dash A. So that's going to check for any running container or a container that are not running. So you can see that I don't have any containers running or anything like that. And I want to check my images. So all my images, I don't have any image at the moment. So whenever I run this command, it's going to pull the image down and then it's going to create the container. It's going to use everything that was specified. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So to run the container using the Docker compose file, we can do Docker and then compose. So Docker compose, and then we're going to say up. And another thing I want to say is dash D. This is going to run it in detached mode, which means we're going to run it and then the terminal is going to come back to it or the shell is not going to be hanged by the process. It's going to quit the process, but the process is not going to be exited. So I'm going to say Docker compose up so that I can run the Docker compose file and then create the container and I'm going to run it in detached mode. So I'm going to press enter on this and this is going to take some time because it needs to download the image and then run the container and do all the configuration and stuff. So I'll come back when it's done. As you can see here, it says a container started. So let's clear the screen and then check our container again. So Docker PS, this is going to show only running containers. And you can see we have the MySQL container running. You can see the port mapping that I have here. So the local port mapping to the container mapping on 3306, which is the default port for MySQL. And if you guys want to see this better, um, I can actually put this inside of Vim so that you can see the result. You can see we have the container name and then the image version, uh, some of the commands, the status, and then some of the port mapping. And let's see what else we have. Uh, yeah, and then we have the name, which is MySQL container. So I'm going to quit all this and not saving this. So we have the MySQL container running on our host and we have the port mapping, which means that we have an actual MySQL server running on this computer and we can connect to it. And I actually had MySQL server installed on my computer and I just remove it because now I have Docker installed. So whenever I need an instance, I can just create it. And I do that for many different services that I need, like Apache servers and things like that. Like I don't really install those things on my computer anymore. I just use a Docker image and I run it whenever I need it. And once I'm done, I get rid of the image. So let's clear the screen. And now I'm going to show you how we're going to connect to this MySQL server that we have running on this computer itself, because I want to show you that it's actually running and everything that was specified was created. And then we need to check that as well before we run the application. So to do this, you also need to have the MySQL client. So I have the MySQL client, but I don't have the MySQL server, which means I have the client I can connect to any MySQL server that is running on anywhere on the internet, as long as it's accessible but I don't have the MySQL server. I just have the client, which is gonna allow me to connect. And I called client by just calling MySQL. And the first thing we need to specify is the host. So this is gonna be our local host, because remember we're mapping the container to the host. So local host is our host. And then I'm gonna specify the port. So the port is 3306, so the default port, because this is the port that we map from the container to the host. So the host port is still 3306. And then I'm gonna specify the protocol. So I need to do dash dash and then protocol. And then this is gonna be TCP and then we can specify our user. So let's start with the root user and then we're going to pass in the password and I'm just going to pass in the password here. Now this is not recommended so it's going to give me a warning whenever I uh, press enter on this command because you have to just put the dash p and then you press enter and then it's going to give you uh, you know access to put in the password which is going to be like hidden because you won't be able to see what's being typed. So that's the warning it's going to give me but this is just for test. I'm just going to put in the password here. So when I run this command it should take us straight inside of the MySQL server. So let's go ahead and run that and you can see I'm inside of the server. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and maybe this is too big, but that's fine. I just want you guys to be able to see. The first thing I want to do is to show databases. So I'm going to say show 
databases because I want to see that if the database that I specify, if it was created. So if I press enter here, you can see we have the patient's DB database in addition to everything else that it created by default. So what that means is that it actually read our script and then it created everything inside of this database. So now let's use this database. So I'm going to say use patient DB. So that's to switch to the patient's DB database. And then here I'm just going to say show tables. So show tables and then see what we have. So you see that we have the patient's table, which we specify in the script. And let's take a look at that. So I'm going to say describe patients. So that's going to describe the tables. That's going to show us all the columns and the row and everything. So let's press enter. And you can see that we have our table exactly the same way that we specify in the script file. And the second thing that I want to do is to check to see if I have anything inside of this table. For right now, we shouldn't have anything inside of this table, but we can check anyway. So I'm going to say select everything from the table. So star from, and then we're going to pass in the table name, which is patients. And that should bear no result. Okay. So you see that we don't have anything inside of this yet. So now that we know we have an instance of MySQL, we can actually get out of this. Now we need to create the configuration to connect to this database. So let's open our application and let's go here and we have to go inside of the config. So I'm going to zoom out now because we don't need to be that big. And inside of the MySQL, you can see that we're passing in all these values and they're coming from the process. When we were creating this configuration, we specify all this information. So we have to pass in all of this information via the process so that when we run the application, it can find these uh, variables that we define on the process and then it should be able to connect to the database. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy all this and then I'm going to create a new file. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to the root of the application and then create a new file and I'm going to call it that ENV. Okay. So that's the dot ENV file, which stands for environment. We're going to place all this environment inside of that file. And because we have that ENV, then you should load all of this whenever we run the application. So let's uh, create this file and then I'm going to press shift I so that I can show a hidden file. You can see that the dot ENV file is shown now, but if I do it again, you can see it's hidden because by default that files are hidden, that folders are hidden. So I'm going to do shift I, and then I'm going to go inside of this file and then get rid of this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste all this information and delete this line. So now we need to specify all of this information. So the DB host, the port, the user, the password, the name, and then the connection limit. I'm going to do control V and then I'm going to select all of this and then I'm going to go down and then remove all this. I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to see if I can select all these again and then delete them. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to go over here, select all this and then delete all this and then just delete all these other ones, delete this and then delete this. So now we have all this information. We just need to specify where everything is. So the host is going to be our host. So that's the local host. So the same host, which is this computer that we use to connect to the database. And then the port is going to be the same. So the port is 3306. So that's the same port of MySQL. And then we're going to go down to the user. We can use the admin user and then we can use the let me in password. So let me in and the database name, it's the patients DB. So oops, I have to put on equal here. So equal patients. DB. So that's the database by default. And then for the limit, I'm just going to specify, let's say uh, 20. Okay. So that should be plenty for this application. And then I'm going to save this file. So now we have the database running and then we have the configuration file, which is going to allow the application to connect. So if you go into the config, you can see that we're calling the dot ENV, which is going to load this file inside of the process. And it's going to pass in all of these values inside of the process for whatever we define them to be. And this is just the initial example that I'm showing you where we run the container on my local computer and then we connect to it. But what I'm going to be doing later is I'm going to combine the application container and the MySQL container into one Docker file so that we can run both of them at the same time with run command. And this is how we're going to deploy the application. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and run the application and see if we can save something in the database.